On numerous occasions, I read about or heard Mohammedan Muslims speak of and believe in what they consider a fact, which is predestination, al Qadar. That is, that everything in the universe has already been preordained by Allah to happen or to be. Muhammad in his Quran makes it absolutely clear his belief in the predestination of all of life as well as of everything else, whether animate or inanimate in this universe. All living creatures have been preordained by Allah even before their creation. There is and can never be free will and or freedom of choice under the cult of Muhammadan Islam. The study of the Quran and the Ahadith shows very clearly and unambiguously that they have not been able to bridge the, in, the diametrically opposite views of human destiny or predestiny. This condition is untenable and no amount of intellectual or theological contortions thought out by the followers of Muhammad can rectify or change the situation. This dichotomy renders most of the Quranic verses utterly meaningless from both the logical and the theological points of view, as will be shown. Chapter 3, verse 145. Nor can a soul die except by Allah's leave, the term being fixed as by writing. It is upon such repeated verses that the followers of Muhammad deny the concept of human free will. Their Allah had predestined their entire life for good or for evil. Chapter 4, 52. And those whom Allah hath cursed, thou wilt find have no one to help. Again and again, the Quran alleges that Allah, the merciful and compassionate, predestines many of his own creation to hellfire without any fault of their own. The God of Israel, on the one hand, is very clear in the Bible in allowing mankind to have the free will to choose between good or evil and be judged accordingly. The Quran, on the other hand, has changed the rules without justification or justice to the detriment of most humans. Chapter 659 Not a leaf doth fall, but with his knowledge. There is not a grain in the darkness or depths of the earth nor anything fresh or dry, green or withered, but is inscribed in a record clear to those who can read. This verse represents one of the clearest declarations of the concept of predestination in the Quran. This concept degrades the human faculty and spirit by straightjacketing it into whatever status it is born to. Neither intellectually nor morally can this be acceptable since it makes Allah guilty of being unjust, immoral, and full of hate as he condemns many of humanity to punishments for committing crimes that they were forced to do because they were already predestined to commit them by him, Allah. Chapter 7, verse 34. To every people is a term appointed. When their term is reached, not an hour can they cause delay nor an hour can they advance. 10. 100. No soul can believe except by the will of Allah, and he will place doubt or obscurity on those who will not understand. Chapter 57, 22. No misfortune can happen on earth or in your souls, but is recorded in a decree before we bring it into existence. We do not have time to recite many more such verses in the Quran and Hadith that the listeners can read at their leisure on our advertised website. I would like to end with two of the most remarkable and revealing Hadith. Sahih al-Bukhari Hadith 6.473 narrated by Ali. Muhammad said, There is none among you and no created soul but has his place written for him either in paradise or in the hellfire, and also has his happy or miserable fate in the hereafter written for him. This hadith clearly states from Muhammad's own mouth the dogma of predestination. Al-Tirmidhi hadith 
number 96, narrated by Abdullah ibn Umar. Allah Messenger went out and he had in his hand two books. He said, do you know what these two books are? We said, Allah Messenger, we do not know, but only that you inform us. Thereupon he said, this one which my right hand possesses is a book from the Lord of the Worlds. It contains the names of the inmates of paradise and the name of their forefathers and those of their tribes. It is most exhaustive and nothing will be added to it nor anything eliminated from it up to eternity. He then said, this one in my left hand side is a book from the Lord of the Worlds. It contains the names of the denizens of hell and the names of their forefathers and their tribes. It is also exhaustive to the end and nothing will be added to it or nothing will be eliminated from it. The companions said, Allah Messenger, if this is the case, then where lies the use of doing a deed if the affair is already decided? Thereupon Muhammad said, stick to the right course and remain as close to it as possible. Ladies and gentlemen, even his most illiterate, gullible, superstitious and unlearned followers were able to ask the most important and pertinent question regarding Muhammad's concept of predestination, for which they did not get a satisfactory answer, because in reality, only the following conclusions can possibly make sense. Item 1. If people are predestined, then there is absolutely no need for religion. Without the need for religion, then there is definitely no need for prophets. Without the need for prophets, then there is no need for Muhammad. Without the need for Muhammad, then there is absolutely no need for his Quran. Item 2. With predestination, even Satan is made redundant, since he cannot possibly deceive any human being whom Allah had already preordained to be good. Item 3. Another very important conclusion based upon this hadith is that the only way possible for Muhammad to have known what was written in the two books and to differentiate between their contents is that if he could read and write, especially since there is no record anywhere showing that either Gabriel or Allah had revealed this knowledge to him. This hadith also destroys completely the assertions by the followers of Muhammad that he was illiterate.